Hello and welcome to the vlog. The time has come for me to start heading down the River Severn from where I am now in Stourport. Initially I'm not going to go far down to Horford Junction and then in on the Droitwich Barge Canal. I've got relatives in the Droitwich area so I'm going to pop and see them. Turn round, back out to the Severn and then down towards Tewkesbury and up the River Avon. Today's journey though just to that barge canal at Droitwich. It is a lovely sunny day, the first sunny day we've had in a few. It's been very rainy and very windy. We've still got the wind, which could be awkward, but at least the sun is shining. I've first of all got to go through a lock into the Stourport Basin and then through two double staircase locks to get out onto the river. There I was just setting the first lock to take me down into the basin when out of nowhere a locky appeared and said he'd help me through those awkward staircase locks onto the river. This was an immense relief. And he also did the paddles taking me down in this lock as well, so really there wasn't much for me to do other than steer. That said, steering was harder than it sounds because there was a heck of a stiff breeze blowing and you have to wind yourself through a basin full of expensive boats in order to get to the staircase locks. Stourport is arranged as four basins interlinked with little corridors and as you go through you need to do some tight 90 degree turns which isn't always straightforward when the wind wants you to go sideways. But I made it and lined up on the pontoon ready for the top lock. The basin was absolutely full of water as you can see with it spilling over the top into the chamber making emptying the lock quite awkward. On the edge of the river a fun fair of some sort and peek closely at those flags it gives you an idea of how breezy it was. Not ideal for trying to do a very offset left out of these locks into the next set. That middle basin is only just wider than my boat is long so manoeuvring will be tricky as you're about to see. I can't turn until the back of the boat has come out of the lock as it needs to swing out but at that point the bow is almost on the other side so there's an awkward reverse then bang into the lock gate but finally into the next staircase. This sign supposedly tells you water levels and therefore danger levels on the river but apparently none of these are actually wired up and working. Instead you use rather more basic technology a coloured stick in the water. If you can see green the levels are fine. If you can only see red, best not to venture out. Thankfully, it is green. With the locky kindly doing a lookout from the bridge for any oncoming boats, I'm free to exit onto the River Severn. He reckoned there was nothing coming, but I like to give a blast on the tutor, just in case. And with that, I'm clear to head downstream on this gorgeous morning. Annoyingly, the wind at the locks blew my TV aerial cable into the way of the bow camera, so from now on every shot from the front is spoiled by this wretched black line. I didn't know this at the time, but luckily was taking quite a few shots anyway from the back. And isn't this a splendid river? Wide, calm and uncluttered by other boats. This dog was loving jumping in after that ball. Will he make it? Will he make it? Yes! These are nice, but I wouldn't want to be there when the river floods. The thing about rivers is you do get a load of really interesting boats moored there, much, much bigger, wider and with more variety than the canals are able to take. Just look at all this lot. Steel boats, fibreglass boats, cruisers, tugs, trawlers. Really interesting to just ogle them all as you go by. Look at the size of that thing! Here's a heron who clearly learned his trade on the catwalks. 
Just ahead, you can see a line of buoys marking a weir, to the left of which is the first river lock on this section of the trip. That, if you're wondering, is the warning sign telling you not to go over the weir. How useful. And there it is. Going over that would not be fun. Thankfully, we have a nice big lock to one side. It's traffic light controlled. See that green light on the pole? And the keeper is letting me straight in. You're supposed to tie a rope round the metal stays. There was actually no turbulence at all, so this seemed unnecessary and actually made life difficult for me getting the centre line looped through it without falling into the lock. As the boat descended, it was all watched over by the locky from his castle of doom. That's the lock landing if you're coming the other way. Sometimes you can moor on those at night, but you must read the signs. I set off at eight, it's quarter past nine, that's the first seven lock done. One more seven lock to do before I get to Droitwich. I should get there in about 40 minutes. It's about three and a half miles, so at river speed, perhaps about 40 minutes. I gave them a quick call in advance to let them know I, I'm coming, they like that. And uh, yeah, very friendly lock keeper as they tend to be. And there's the other side of the weir I just went past, a fearsome beast. I'm chugging along at only slightly more revs than I would on a canal, but the downstream current of the river is really making me fly. I reckon this is easily five or six miles an hour, which for a canal boat feels as though I'm racing. Despite that, I'm leaving little wake behind me. My boat is very good for that. Here's a waterside pub, one of only a few stopping points on the Severn. Boats are welcome, it says, and there's a fair amount of mooring pontoons alongside the riverbank for just that. Unlike the canal, you can't just stop anywhere on a river. Most of the bank is privately owned and people have their own moorings. I seem to be the only boat moving today, so any worries I had about the river being a nightmare to navigate have largely dissipated. And whilst it's not the most scenic location, it's certainly not bad. There's all the usual array of wildlife too, including herons that refuse to be photographed. Coming towards Holt Heath now, it's a little village with a lot of expensive cruisers strewn along the bank. On the bank itself, the most perfect classic English house ever, which I was so busy filming, I almost veered too far to port and into the path of this whopper of a passenger boat. No real issue, there was plenty of time to get out of its way with a bit of throttle, but I expect the captain didn't think much of the idiot on the narrowboat dicking about with a camcorder instead of paying attention. Sorry! On the other side, another pub. Now approaching the second lock, Holt Lock. I've tried calling them twice, I just got their answer phone, so I'm going to be a nice surprise for them. Ah, that's better. A sign you can actually see. What a novelty. And another to ensure you go the right way. Same sort of thing as before, traffic light on green letting me in. These are monster locks, presumably because big boats like that trip ship need to come through. My little narrowboat is quite dwarfed in the chamber. The great thing about these is that they're operated by a bloke in a shed pressing some buttons. No one needs to get wet. This is Holt Fleet Bridge, and on the other side of it, a little surprise for me. I've eaten in that pub many times and watched the boats go by. I never thought I'd be one of them. Just visible is Holt Castle. And onward still, like a bat out of hell. I can hear Meatloaf now. I'm coming up to the junction with the Droitwich Barge Canal and it's off at a slight angle, so what I'll need to do is go past it, do a Yui, and then come back up again. And apart from anything else, that means I'll be coming upstream, which should be easier to uh, manoeuvre in terms of getting onto the pontoons there, I think. 
the sheep could not be less interested in my manoeuvring. Isn't that typical though? Barely another boat seen all morning and just as I want to do a U-turn, another one appears. Never mind, I'll go behind it. I think the phrase is, let's crank it. I tell you what, as soon as you turn and have the river pushing against you, you really notice it. I had to give the engine some real welly, especially now coming back upstream to the lock, and the wind was pushing me back too. Made it! And into the first lock of the Droitwich Barge Canal. These are wide locks, and they have the heaviest gates I've ever opened. Straight round the corner to lock number two, and as soon as I get above this there should be some mooring, though it is very limited I hear. There we go, a stretch of Armco for about three, maybe four boats, and that's all there is until Droitwich. It's one of the downsides of this route, not much mooring, so I'm very grateful it's not busy. I'll go in on this straight bit ahead of the red boat. It's pretty decent with lots of mooring rings, though I use chains so as to squeeze up to the next boat to keep space free for anyone coming later. As I tie, minor excitement, as the CRT set out to cut down a fallen tree further up. Good thing I'm stopping. That's it. Cheerio.